So we're already halfway through 2021, which considering this year the world is still a burning garbage fire is no real particularly bad thing. And already we've seen massive smartphone launches from the likes of Samsung, Sony, Oppo, OnePlus and Xiaomi. But we've still actually got a fair few smartphones to go before 2021 finally f***s right off and 2022 swaggers into view with all the confidence of an acne ridden prepubescent clad in oversized shorts stained with stale urine. Absolutely loads of mobile manufacturers such as Google, Huawei, Samsung and yes those Apple fellas still have phones to amaze and astound us with. So let's have a gander at some of the biggest smartphone launches yet to come in 2021 and for more on the latest and greatest tech please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now one handset that Google fans will certainly be excited for is the Pixel 6, the follow up to the pleasingly compact Pixel 5 as shown here. Despite being about 9 months old, the Pixel 5 is still one of the best camera phones in 2021. But that reign should finally be ended come October time when the Pixel 6 and possibly a Pixel 6 XL will be unveiled by Google. Leaked images so far show a central selfie cam in that OLED display plus an enlarged camera bump around back with two lenses for the Pixel 6 and three for the XL model. And that third shooter reserved solely for the bigger blower could well be a telephoto lens if rumours are on the money. It'd be the first time we've had one of those on a Pixel phone so that'll be exciting times. We've also got a 50 megapixel primary sensor and a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle sensor on both Pixel 6 handsets. Of course these are just rumours so far could all turn out to be utter b****. There's also talk of the fresh new Pixel flagship smartphones being powered by a new Whitechapel chipset which is actually going to be crafted by Google and Samsung working in collaboration apparently. If that is true just please god may it not be another Exynos. And Google should also be launching the more affordable Pixel 5a any day now as well hopefully boasting the same or similar camera tech to the Pixel 6. Although Google itself has said that yes unfortunately it will be a limited release for the Pixel 5a including just a couple of countries like the US and Japan. You can expect similar specs and design to the excellent Pixel 4a, still a great handset in 2021, including a punchy OLED screen and a Snapdragon 700 series chipset, plus the usual guaranteed OS and security updates. Now it may seem several lockdowns ago that Sony launched its fresh Xperia Mark III handsets, but none of them have actually hit stores here in the UK, at least not yet. The Xperia 1 Mark III flagship phone is due for release on August the 19th, giving you a few weeks to try and save up the 1,200 quid you will need to buy one. Is it actually worth that massive asking price? Well, go check out my full review for my verdict on that one. Or alternatively, if you've decided that life's too short to piss away yet more valuable minutes watching yet another video of some slaphead banging on about phones, well, in summary, it is a very niche device that's excellent for movie and audio lovers, as well as anyone who wants a deep, customizable camera experience. But to be honest, most people will be happier with a different, less horrendously expensive blower. If you're still tempted by that Xperia flagship smartphone but you haven't quite got the massive cash reserves to hand just yet, you might be more tempted maybe by the Xperia 5 Mark III which boasts the same excellent camera tech, the same fantastic media chops and of course that brilliantly powerful performance but this time for under a grand thankfully. I haven't got my hands on the Xperia 5 Mark III just yet unfortunately that's because it's not actually due to hit the UK until September time so even more of a wait but I still love the Xperia 5 Mark II from last year go check out my long term review of that if you haven't already so I've got big high hopes for that Mark III. Now Samsung is another manufacturer who of course everyone is expecting to spaff out several new phones before 2021 has buggered right off. The next Galaxy Unpacked event is slated for August the 11th and that's when we should see a couple of new bendy blowers. For one there'll likely be a fresh new Galaxy Z Flip sporting a similarly pleasing pocket sized design but with a larger external screen thank god. That'll be especially useful when you're using it as a viewfinder for that main camera. Various sources point to a 3300mAh battery but there's widespread disagreements on the actual chipset. I personally reckon you can expect a Snapdragon 865 or an 870 which should provide plenty of grunt for everything you need and also work quite well with the compact form factor. You can also expect a Galaxy Z Fold 3 if you like your smartphone to be built like a literal brick. This looks very similar to the Fold 2 according to early renders complete with a bit of Fold Edition S Pen action. The main screen should stick at around 7.6 inches but the external panel will apparently be boosted to a mighty 6.2 inches, both of them AMOLED tech of course. And interestingly it looks like that massive internal display will also house an under display camera and that means no notches or selfie camera orifices which is always a bonus but on the flip side ZT already attempted an under display camera with the Axon 25G and it failed pretty epically. 
It is hoping that if the rumours are actually true, that Samsung's effort is considerably less shonky. Meanwhile, that triple lens rear camera setup on the Z Fold 3 will likely serve up a 12 megapixel primary sensor, 12 megapixel ultra wide angle, and a 12 megapixel telephoto shooter. You can probably expect similar sort of camera results to the Galaxy S21, although there's no mention of optical image stabilization in the Z Fold 3 leaked specs. Now, one of my favorite Samsung phones of 2020 was the Galaxy S20 Fan Edition, which offered a premium experience, but for less cash than those flagships. And yes, hibib hooray, you can expect Sammy to bung us a fresh new Galaxy S21 FE towards the arse end of 2021. And some tipsters are still expecting to see it in that August Galaxy Unpacked, but that's going to be pretty full already with the, you know, the flippy, foldy phones. You've got the likes of the Galaxy Watch, new Galaxy Buds, all kinds of stuff. So I reckon it'll be served up at the end of the year in a separate event, especially as there's rumours that it's been delayed due to the microchip shortage. You can expect a similar glastic design to the S21, this time in a range of rainbow colours, and it's crammed full of premium tech like hopefully a Snapdragon 888 chipset and not a sodden Exynos, plus a bigger battery, another gorgeous AMOLED screen with HDR support and fast refresh, and of course some feature-packed camera action. It's all just still internet rumours and such forth, of course, so far, but that still doesn't stop me from being more excited than a very excited child bouncing up and down on a bouncy castle with about 12 kilos of Haribo inside them. And if you fancy a bit of Apple action, well, the iPhone 13 is, of course, expected to land around sort of October time in 2021, uh, along with a Pro version, a Pro Max, and possibly a Mini as well. As usual, these will likely be small evolutions rather than anything particularly mind-blowing. You can expect better performance from Apple's A15 chip, plus finally some 120Hz refresh action, improvements to the ultra-wide angle camera sensor, and perhaps a slightly less ridiculously huge screen notch as well. There are also rumours that Apple will finally reintroduce the Touch ID fingerprint sensor on the new iPhone 13 models as well, which would be kind of helpful considering quite a few of us still cover up a significant chunk of our faces every time we decide to mingle with fellow human beings. Now, one mobile manufacturer whose presence has sadly significantly decreased in the West ever since Trump gave them a good old kick in the crotch a couple of years back is Huawei. But I'm definitely hoping for a big European launch for the fresh new Huawei P50 series later in 2021. So far, we've only seen teaser images showcasing a very distinctive arse end, but no proper talk of specs and features. What we do know is that the P50 handsets will be running Huawei's own Harmony OS, which I recently checked out on this here MatePad 11 tablet. Definitely go check out my video for a closer look at all of that shenanigans. As usual, you can expect the P50 series to be powered by Huawei's own Kirin chipsets, and hopefully they will be packing some of the best camera tech around. And likewise, Huawei's old sister brand Honor is set to launch the familiar looking Honor 50 family here in Blighty on August the 12th, following a successful early unveiling in home territories. In fact, the fresh Honor 50 series looks suspiciously like the Huawei P50, which was recently teased online, complete with those enormous round camera bumps that seem to stare at you like the blackened, soulless eyes of a cartoon minion that took one too many knocks to the noggin and transformed into a murderous psychopath, hell-bent on snuffing out as many lives as possible before slashing its own throat in defiance of the twisted, godless society that created it. The 6.57-inch Honor 50 is joined by a bigger and more expensive Pro model, both of which sport a 120 hertz screen. You've also got them powered by a Snapdragon 778G chipset with a 5G modem built in. So certainly pretty good news for gamers, especially if you're going to bag that Pro model because it comes with dual vapor chamber coolant tech. And while the standard Honor 50 has a bigger 4,300mAh battery versus the 4,000mAh effort on the Pro, that Pro model does support ridiculously powerful 100 watt fast charging, given a full charge in just over 20 minutes. Mind, the Honor 50 ain't exactly a slouch here, with 66 watt fast charging also supported. As for that slightly terrifying camera tech, where well, you've got a 100 megapixel primary camera sensor, you've also got an 8 megapixel wide angle camera, a 2 megapixel macro camera, and a 2 megapixel depth sensor, obviously. But of course, the best news is that Google services are A OK -okay here on the Honor 50 phones because of that Huawei split. So you've got Google Play support, all that good stuff, no worries. And last up, before winter finally sets in and some fat git in a red coat and a sack tries to squeeze his way down your chimney, we may well see a new black. Blackberry branded handset of all things, courtesy of the new owner's onward mobility. At least the buggers have promised us one, but uh, who knows because there's actually been no fresh news for a good few months now, so uh, yeah. ZT is set to unveil a fresh new Axon 30 branded handset, again with an under 
display selfie cam as well so here's hoping it's an improved effort compared with the Axon 25G. You can also expect to see plenty of new blows from the likes of Oppo, OnePlus, Xiaomi, Realme, Poco, lots of other manufacturers as well so if you want to see me fondling all of those then definitely please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. And what smartphones are you most looking forward to in 2021 as well? If I missed off your favourites call me a massive dingus in the comments and clue me in. It'd be great to hear from you guys and please do have yourselves a fantastic rest of the week. Cheers everyone, love you!